I'm in Canal, a suburb in Sydney, South and Shire, also known as part of the Darwin Nation, one of the many Indigenous nations of Indigenous people who settled in Australia over 50,000 years ago. They were de de descendants of the first humans to migrate out of Africa via Asia and likely had excellent seafaring skills in order to cross the mainland, which is now submerged by the Timor Sea. The Tawa people resourcefully used bark from the local trees to construct canoes. And once in these waters behind me, fishing for the next meal. In 1770, Captain Cook sailed to this location on the Endeavour. Eighteen years later, eleven ships known as the First Fleet returned with approximately 1,500 people, half convicts and the other half crew and marines. The group also included about 40 children, many of whom were born at sea. They sailed for 36 weeks from the United Kingdom with orders to set up an offshore penal colony. Unfortunately, 48 people died on the journey. They found this area was unsuitable and sailed up to set up colony in the Gadigal Nation, 20 kilometres to the north, now commonly known as Sydney. The majority of the people on the First Fleet were British, but there were also African, North American and French convicts on board. Around half a million Indigenous Australians lived on this land prior to the arrival of the First Fleet, and the population grew to exceed one million over the following century, as many more migrated to Australia by sailing and steamships. The spread of disease, however, killed many of the Indigenous Australians in the areas surrounding the colonies. From 1860 until 1967, when it was abolished by the state, more than 7,000 children from the UK and Malta were transported, unaccompanied, to Australia under the child migration schemes. These children, now referred to as part of the Forgotten Australians, came from workhouses or were found destitute and homeless in overcrowded cities and declining rural areas. In later periods, they were sent from children's homes and orphanages, some parents purposefully chose the schemes for their children as they were unable to look after them, while other parents were forced to give up their children for the child migration. Many of these children suffered from neglect and were abused physically, emotionally and or sexually while living in the children's homes in Australia. By 1967, Australia's population had reached over 12 million people. Between 1975 and 1981, after the Vietnam War had ended, 56 boats with over 2,000 people reached Australia in small river and fishing boats desperately fleeing post-war persecution in Vietnam. It's estimated that over 400,000 people died at sea attempting the same journey. Today, over 185,000 Vietnam-born people live in Australia. For the last decade, TV and social media sites have been keeping up to speed with the government talking about boat people. Who are they? Where did they come from? Why did they leave? Why are they in this situation? These people are running for their lives. They have nothing but the clothes on their back. For many of the asylum seekers coming by boat from Afghanistan, Iran, Sri Lanka, Pakistan and other countries were living under repressive regimes that are at war or in a post-war state due to recent conflict. For some, all avenues to gain asylum have been exhausted and overcrowded refugee camps holding millions of people are limited by quotas set by countries receiving refugees. According to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, also known as the UNHCR, an asylum seeker is not classified as a refugee until they are processed under the nation's fast and fair asylum system. However, the UNHCR also notes that with mass movements of asylum seekers from an area of conflict, it is evident why they have fled and why they should be generally classified as prima facie refugees. Others may be fleeing individual or minority persecution and should also have their claims processed under the fast and fair system. Article 14 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights states that everyone has the right to seek and enjoy asylum from persecution. When Kevin Rudd regained the Prime Minister's office in 2013, he changed the Labor government's stance, stating that asylum seekers arriving in Australia by boat will not be resettled in Australia. The 2013 federal election saw the beginning of the coalition government with Tony Abbott as Prime Minister and Scott Morrison as the Minister for Immigration and Border Protection. Shortly after, the government continued with the Labor Party's offshore processing and refusal of asylum seekers' claims processing, all because they travelled by boat. However, they went further by loading asylum seekers onto rafts stripped of safety equipment and launching them back into Indonesian waters. 
asylum seekers were also flown, against their will, back to the country they had attempted to flee. More recently, Sri Lankan asylum seekers were handed over to the Sri Lankan Navy at sea, while others have simply disappeared while a High Court case is being fought in an attempt to protect them. A few weeks into Abbott's government term, Father Bob Maguire, known as the Larrikin Priest, tweeted, Is there a spare sea shepherd vessel, maybe renamed Good Samaritan, which could monitor asylum seeker welfare? It works for whales. This month he followed up with another tweet. Could the sea shepherd be our civil society, Good Shepherd patrolling and monitoring our northwestern waters for the care and protection of strangers? A vessel named the Good Samaritan is needed to monitor asylum seekers' welfare. With Father Bob's strong vision and immense support of the Australian people, I'm starting a crowdfunding project to raise the startup funds to purchase a vessel and from a not-for-profit organisation, helping asylum seekers in the seas surrounding Australia. To ensure an accurate historical record and to ensure the asylum seekers are treated humanely and that their asylum claims are processed quickly and fairly. The Australian Government has broken international laws and the International Refugee Convention on multiple occasions. Under international law, our vessel should not be subject to any undue delay, financial burden or other related difficulties after assisting persons at sea. Additionally, the Australian Government should offer appropriate assistance. The survivors of distressing incidents will be provided with aid regardless of their nationality, status or the circumstances in which they are found. Our vessel will be able to deliver persons retrieved in distress at sea to a place of safety. Asylum seekers will receive medical treatment on board our vessel. We'll avoid disembarkment of asylum seekers into territories in which the lives and freedoms of those alleging a well-founded fear of persecution would be threatened.